One, two, three, sleep. Mind control. 1999, forensic psychologist Dick Anthony concluded that the CIA had invented the concept of brainwashing as a propaganda strategy to undercut communist claims that American pals in the Korean communist camps had voluntarily expressed sympathy for communism. He argued that the books of Edward Hunter, whom he identified as a secret CIA psychological warfare specialist passing as a journalist, pushed the CIA brainwashing theory onto the general public, succumbing to their own propaganda for 20 years starting in the early 1950s, the CIA and the Defense Department conducted secret research, notably including Project MK Ultra, in an attempt to develop practical brainwashing techniques. The results are unknown, well, unless you ask Roseanne that is. Is the media and entertainment responsible for perpetuating a rape culture? Yeah, I think the media is responsible for perpetuating a rape culture. And, you know, I mean, it's profitable for the people at the top who run the rape culture, uh, you know, who run it and, uh, you know, they profit from it. And, and to say otherwise would be a big fat lie. But um, so, you know, they don't want any kind of power shifted away from the way they have it set up They're in a very higher, hierarchical uh, manner with uh, you know, women's free labor at the bottom, largely uh, slave labor, at the bottom of that big pyramid. You've been a Hollywood insider for so long, yet you've been vocal for so long. I mean, how challenging is it to see your colleagues across Hollywood lacking for the Obama administration when they have so much power and influence that they could single-handedly shape the dialogue when so many people are watching them? Well, uh, I think that, you know, this is a culture of fear and um, nobody's more afraid than people in Hollywood. They're afraid that they'll drop out of the top, you know, th they're afraid that they'll drop from the bottom of the pyramid, maybe to the middle of the pyramid. But, you know, they, they, they're the ones, uh, Hollywood is the, is the one that keeps all this power structure and all this culture of racism and sexism and, uh, and classism and genderism and all of it in place. They continually feed it and they make a lot of money doing it. And they do it at the behest of their masters who run everything. So, you know, they're not gonna get brave enough to do that. I mean, I think that there, there aren't many of us who, um, who are brave enough to do that. And I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I can do it and I feel that I do it on behalf of uh, many people in Hollywood too. I, I go to Hollywood parties or, you know, occasionally I go to Oscar parties and things like that. And people, big stars, people will grab me by the arm and take me aside and say, I just want to thank you for the <laughs> things you say. And it blows my mind, but that, that's the culture. It's a culture of fear for sure. Um, you know, and, and it's a, a big culture of uh, mind control too. MK Ultra mind control rules in Hollywood. If, if you don't know, Google that and look into it. Well, we've talked about Operation Mockingbird, MK, my, MK Ultra mind control stuff from, I mean, this goes back decades and decades. But Roseanne, I mean, do you know people have been blacklisted? I mean, is it just kind of a self-censorship in Hollywood or do people actually get edged out if they are too much against the grain? Um, yeah, it's self-censorship after a while, but it's not just a crazy self-censorship. It's self-censorship because it, it, there, there's actually a danger that you will never work again. And uh, people know it. They, they, everybody has friends that it happened to, that maybe you said too much or maybe you were too vocal on, on, uh, on uh, unpopular issues. And it's funny because it doesn't matter if two years later, I find this a lot, that two years later, those unpopular issues become very mainstream. They still don't forgive the first person who does it. And uh, that's kind of been my story there when you're first. Dun, 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 dun. Well, I come from six feet under with a dead guy on my knee. I'm heading down to Hades for to spend eternity. The sitcom Roseanne, starring the woman by the same name, was the nerve center for anti Christian sentiment in the 1990s. Even worse than you thought. Well, what kind of crowd? He's not doing drugs, is he? No, no. <laughs> He's going to church. Oh, God, no. <laughs> In her autobiography, My Lives, she spoke of leaving her body and communicating with voices from unseen beings. When I went away, I left my body completely and could hear other voices all around me chattering about how God would make me strong and how nobody could really get me. A spiritual message, really. 
The voices that she heard were not from the God of the Bible. The Ouija board wasn't sending me a message from the dead. She has engaged in automatic writing. Roseanne writes of her channeling. It would all just come pouring out as if I were in a trance, and not until I reread it did I know what it was about. Sometimes it would scare me to read it because it seemed to belong to another place and time, and I would wonder, where did I get this? These demonic influences used Roseanne like a puppet to usher society into Crowley's New Age philosophies through her shows. Oh my God! It's not hard to connect the dots and see the common denominators that have worked through the lives of the Hollywood elite. Movie screens, they hung up white sheets uh, you know, for these going to be vilified, despite the fact that two years later everybody's saying what you said. You're still going to be vilified because you dared. And, you know, uh, you know, like they say, the Chinese, uh, you know, the Chinese have a, uh, a myth or a saying that says that the nail that stands up is hammered down. And that's how it is here and everywhere in the world. Right. You know, you don't really want to put yourself at odds with with people who um, decide your future and, and pay you know, for your uh, work. But sometimes you have to. And, and I was very lucky that I had a successful show that made me uh, a, lo a lot of money and so that I can do that. And I feel that I owe that to the people I, I came from to say those things that maybe they can't say because they're afraid they'll be fired or they're afraid even that they'll be put in jail or what. But sometimes you have to. And, and I was very lucky that I had a successful show that made me uh, a, lo a lot of money and so that I can do that. And I feel that I owe that to the people I, I came from to say those things that maybe they can't say because they're afraid they'll be fired or they're afraid even that they'll be put in jail or what. But sometimes you have to. On and off for about a good six, five months. I haven't really spoken to them because of everything they've been causing, problems in my life. Nations were published today in a BuzzFeed newsroom with the Chicago reporter who wrote the story, Leah.